Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, to all the participants, uh, Professor Sachi Kotail is here with us. Okay. So, as you people join, uh, let me uh, introduce him to you. Uh, Dr. Shashi K. Kotil had his undergraduate, graduate and doctoral degrees in electrical engineering respectively from RMC Calicut, CBT Trivandrum and Jadavpur University, Kolkata. Renewable energy and energy management are the areas of his interest. He served as faculty member of Nerist Itanagar from 1986 to 2004 and the Samarga School of Engineering, Coimbatore from 2004 to 2020. Dr. Shashi is presently adjunct professor in the Department of Energy at Tejpur University, Assam. He also serves as a director of Setran, a consultancy company and technical director of V-Charge, an EV charging company. He has been the project director of Ahelia Alternate Energy Private Limited during 2015-16 to develop an 8.4 megawatt wind farm in Kerala. He has published more than 130 papers, delivered more than 230 talks, completed 12 sponsored research projects, and edited two books, including Smart Microgrids, published by CRC Press. So, it's, sir, I hand over the uh, class to you. You can start, sir, please. We are really uh, um, uh, blessed that you are here with us. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking our invitation and joining us. Over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everybody. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. All of okay, you, please let's... mute your mics. Yashpal Singh, please mute. Okay. Uh, so that he can take his class very comfortably. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, continue. Yeah, yeah. So welcome to this session. In the background, you are seeing a grid tied wind electric generator. And uh, what is special about it is that this is in an educational campus. That's what, while introducing me, ma'am was referring to uh, an 8.4 megawatt wind farm. That's what you are seeing for such machines. Anyway, we will come to the details of that. But otherwise, starting with wind, wind is the heat transport in the atmosphere. So if you look at this plot where the incoming solar radiation onto the surface of earth that is plotted and compared with the outgoing that is the reflected radiation and we find that around the equator this is the northern uh, hemisphere is shown around the equator why the incoming radiation is higher than what is reflected whereas towards the poles the reflected one outgoing one is a higher and that shows or establishes the heat transport in the atmosphere. For this heat transport, wind is the major vehicle. Of course, ocean currents uh, take 30% of this remaining with the wind. And these winds are set up on the surface of Earth. We call it global winds. Means around uh, the equator region, the tropical region, the warm air goes up towards north, towards the poles, but not just northwards because of the Coriolis force, that is a force because of the rotation of Earth that will be toward, pulling it towards east. So the movement of warm air will be towards northeast. And naturally that will be replaced. That will be replaced by the cold air from the Earth. So this is the tropical region where India, our country is lying. So these are the trade winds coming from the northeast that we should get. But then there is a difference, that is the monsoon. Uh, this is something special for India, where during that season, that's when the sun moves towards north, away from the equator, March to June. Around June or at the mid or the beginning of the June, we get this south western monsoon starts. That is because of these trade winds. What you are seeing here from here, they are crossing the equator, and then because of the Coriolis force, they are moving it. So. Indian wind is mainly the monsoon wind that will the, the southwest for five, six months, and then it's a, a reverse monsoon for the remaining period. The power in the wind is again known to most of you, I believe. Well, it is air in motion, so there's a kinetic energy. 
half mv square is a kinetic energy. The power, if you take from that, we need to consider the mass flow rate, m dot. So there is a cross-section area if you consider A and per unit time per second will be moving by a distance of V meters if the wind speed is V meter per second. From that, we get the power in the wind as half rho A V cube as a, an expression. It's everyone related to wind energy or every any student of wind energy will be learning first. And that wind speed will be contributing an energy of half rho AV cube multiplied by a duration, TV is the duration of that particular wind speed in the period concerned, say if in a year means the annual contribution. Well, this wind, when it comes to the turbine, wind turbine, or the cross section of the wind turbine blade is shown here. This is called the airfoil. And uh, I can draw that separately, see, like this. So when the wind speed, when the wind is coming onto it, the wind stream gets split, one part on top of it, other at the bottom. And uh, uh, the design of this airfoil is such that on top, the path length is more or the, there's a low pressure on the top side and a high pressure at the bottom. As a result, there will be a force upwards. That's a lift force. It is with the lift force, the wind turbine. It's a horizontal axis wind turbine which rotates in a vertical plane that make use of the lift force. Otherwise, in the line of you know, force uh, of the wind direction, there will be a drag force. That's what the you know, vertical axis wind turbine will be using. Well, uh, when again, this is the uh, airfoil and uh, this is the wind speed, but you know, the wind, the wind turbine blade is moving. It's in a vertical plane means it's moving upwards. As a result, uh, the resultant uh, wind speed, you have to consider the reverse of that turbine motion. So this will be the direction. In that direction, that is the drag force will be in that direction. Perpendicular to that, uh, you get the lift force, but then the turbine blade is moving in, in a vertical plane. As a result, uh, the projection of that lift force in this direction that only the turbine will be getting it that with that it will be rotating let it rotate what we are interested in is the power extracted by the wind turbine from the wind stream so any power conversion will be having an efficiency the efficiency of the wind turbine we call it the power coefficient uh, uh, that is plotted against the tip speed ratio that forms the cp lambda characteristics the major characteristics of the wind turbine which the electrical engineer also needs to know when we design or operate the wind turbine generator. Power CP is the power coefficient and the tip speed ratio, that is uh, lambda. See, it's the ratio of omega into omega is the angular speed you know, of the shaft, of the turbine shaft, and R is the length of the blade. So omega R on the numerator, you are having the linear speed at the tip of the turbine blade, and uh, denominator is the wind speed. That ratio is called the tip speed ratio of lambda. You see, the efficiency varies with lambda. And for a particular value of the lambda, tip speed ratio, it's called the optimum lambda or the design lambda. For that, the efficiency is maximum, CP max. Theoretically, the maximum value is called Betts limit is 59%. Commercially, we have achieved up to around 50%. So with that, earlier we said the power in the wind is a half row AV cube. And uh, if you consider the efficiency power coefficient, the power output of the wind turbine is half rho a v cube into CP. CP is a function of not only lambda, the blade pitch angle also. If you change the blade pitch angle, the family of curves you are seeing, each one is for a different pitch angle beta. So by varying the beta, the pitch angle, we can vary the efficiency of conversion of the wind turbine. Well, uh, the there is another curve of the wind turbine and uh, uh, or mostly used for the wind turbine generator, that is the power curve. The power curve is a plot of the power output in kilowatts or megawatts, power output against the wind speed or the entire operating range of the wind speed. Uh, the, what is the power produced? You can see that there is no power output 
till the wind speed reaches a cutting wind speed. Below the cutting wind speed, there is no generation because the power in the wind in that region below cutting wind speed is not sufficient to meet the losses in the system. When the wind speed increases, the power output decreases and the output power becomes equal to the rated power at a particular wind speed. That's called a rated wind speed. Beyond that also the generate the turbine works uh, to fix the generator. The generator also will be giving the output and uh, up to a maximum wind speed that's called the cutoff wind speed, which is commercially for most of the grid connected machines is 25 meters per second. What is interesting is to note that from the rated wind speed up to the cutoff wind speed, the power output of a wind turbine or a wind turbine generator remain constant. This is you know, because of uh, definitely certain control regulation, the power regulation that the wind turbine is employing. Uh, uh, sometimes this is done with the help of pitch control. Um, it's called the pitch regulation where you can see that each blade will be rotated to change the pitch angle. All the three blades should be rotated together and equally the same pitch angle for all the three blades. It's called a pitch control. You have seen the previous family of curves where you are here. Uh, it shows that by changing the pitch that efficiency can vary. So effectively what we do is that in this region from, uh, from rated wind speed to cutoff wind speed in that region, the efficiency that CP of the wind turbine is continuously decreased. It is decreased up to such a small values until like two to three percent when it reaches the cutoff wind speed. Beyond that, it cannot operate. Um, so what is important to note is that the turbine is facing the wind. The turbine is facing the wind speed, the variation in the wind speed. With the variation in the wind speed from cutting wind speed to rated wind speed, it's varying output. But beyond that, the turbine output is constant in spite of a varying input power to that. It's you know, withstanding. And uh, the generator, electric generator, uh, takes it as a constant power input, constant power output, constant load operation for the generator. It's not uh, taken to the task of facing high wind speeds and uh, 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 the risk stress involved in that. So three wind speed ratings are the uh, for the wind turbine, the cutting, rated, and cutoff. And uh, as I told you, that power regulation above rated wind speed can be done either by a pitch regulation or by a stall regulation. Stall regulation uh, means we are not varying the pitch angle while operating. The pitch control is not done. The blade is not rotated. But the blade has a design, uh, basically, with a continuously varying pitch angle from the root to the tip. Um, so uh, the angle of attack of the wind speed uh, that will change the lift force beyond certain value of the wind speed that's above the rated wind speed automatically it changes. It may not be looking at the power curve. You can see whether you can see whether uh, it is pitch controlled or star uh, controlled. That is if the portion, this portion, if it is a flat, that's pitch controlled. That precise control is possible with pitch angle. Otherwise, it may be fluctuating uh, slightly. Well, uh, active stall regulations, combination of these two, that's also used. Otherwise, uh, looking at the wind turbine generator power curve, this is what we are interested in we are telling. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, four, uh, some four, five different machines of different capacity. Uh, the power curves are shown here. As seen in the previous case here also there's a cutting wind speed it's a rated wind speed that is different for different uh, more market models different manufacturer uh, manufacturers are having different models with a different capacity yeah and still there's a cutoff that's mostly common for all these models it is 25. so we uh, found that the power in the wind is half row av cube and the power output of the turbine is half row AV cube into CP. Now the power output of the generator, that is half rho AV cube into CP into the efficiency of the generator, eta G. At the rated uh, power, that is PR, if you consider that is a rated power, power output of a generator, 
it has to be uh, computed or it has to be uh, certified based on the standard value of the density that is 1.225 kilogram per meter cube. Whereas at the site, if the value is different, we will be getting a different value of rated power. It needs to be corrected, air density correction. And uh, the rated wind speed should be used to be R, um, the rated wind speed Q into the corresponding value of CP and the corresponding value of electrical generator efficiency. That uh, will be the rated power output. Well, uh, excuse me, sir, may I ask some question? Sure, sure, please. Uh, sir, in the previous slide, uh, you have given the equation for the rated power output. So, yeah. in, in practicality, uh, do we get uh, the power output near to the rated output in, uh, in, in any of the uh, reputed manufacturers wind turbine? No, you are uh, rated power in this region. See, if uh, for rated wind speed, see, if you are considering this parker, at this wind speed, where it is 15 meters per second, then only the rated power, that is 3,500 or ever 3,600, that is coming at the rated wind speed and above that. Below that, when the wind speed is below that, say 4 meters per second to 50 meters per second, the power is less, the output power is less. For any machine, it will be that. So that's why I categorically mentioned that when you say a 3 megawatt machine or a 1 megawatt machine, it only means that uh, at the rated wind speed, we have to say that if it is 40 meters per second, at that wind speed, you will be getting that power. Below that, you will not get that power. Above that, also, you will be getting the same power. Above rated wind speed, also, that power is going to constant power regulation. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, one more question, sir. In the previous slide, you have mentioned the graph of power coefficient versus tip ratio, tip speed ratio. Yeah. So, yes. sir, uh, when uh, in this graph, when we are increasing tip speed ratio, the power coefficient is decreasing uh, from the that seven value it's between six to eight. It both is ways, a, both ways. In, in fact, yes. uh, yeah, now you know that the, the machine starts uh, functioning from uh, uh, cutting wind speed. At cutting wind speed, it may be operating here, and then the wind speed increases because of the lambda. This is a relation of lambda. It's inversely uh, related to wind speed. So the lambda value decreases. So point of operation moves like this. And uh, around rated wind speed, it may be here, operating here. And as I told you, above rated wind speed, CP has to be deliberately decreased. It has to be brought down. So the operation will be traversing all these points. Clear? OK, okay sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. So, uh, whenever you uh, feel like asking, immediately stop me and uh, uh, put the questions. Yeah. Now, uh, um, our target in this presentation uh, is to discuss uh, the, me, sir. the future. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, uh, uh, do we have any uh, micro turbines which can work below a speed? Like suppose a speed, uh, average speed is coming for a particular area is around uh, four to five uh, meter per second. That is. So, is it possible to um, get a turbine which can work within uh, with this speed also? You are asking uh, the minimum wind speed, the cutting wind speed. Are you referring to the cutting wind speed below four? This is what you are asking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what I am asking, suppose uh, in a particular region, wind speed is not sufficient. That is a very uh, low pace. Uh, average is coming around three or four meter per second. So uh, uh, there are uh, wind generators which can work in that uh, low speed also, because uh, from the graph okay, it is clear I, that power I, I is not being generated. Yeah. You, yeah. In the in the graph, what we are showing is the real wind speed. Say the cutting wind speed for large machines is usually three point five to four meters per second. And uh, there are, as you said, micro wind turbines, so small wind turbines, so 50 watts, 100 watts, 200 watts, like that. Those machines may be working, will be working at a wind, it's a cutting wind speed will uh, can be say 2, 2.5, uh, like that, not below that. Cutting wind speed is mainly because the system, the components. So that way in smaller machines, so the losses will be less and the cutting can be less. But then uh, having a much less cutting wind speed uh, is of not much relevance because, you know, it is the power in the wind is proportional to cube of the wind speed. You know? 
So uh, one meter per second, that power is much less. When you increase the wind speed, then only uh, the power will be increasing. It's proportional to cube of the wind speed. So that way, it, it doesn't make very high uh, sense in reducing the cutting wind speed. Uh, but you can do that in smaller machines. OK? OK. So if I uh, yeah, start with uh, uh, the different uh, te technologies, wind turbine generator technologies, which are uh, been in use, which are in use, and uh, uh, the developments in that. Because we target the future technologies, the wind turbine generators for the future. That's our topic. So here, uh, the first one, the first two one, so it's a squirrel cage induction generator, wind turbine driven squirrel cage induction generator. And uh, started with that, uh, the first uh, grid connected squirrel cage induction generator was developed in 1924 in Russia. Since then, and it is commercial one was 1981 in uh, US. Since then, 80s and 90s were the time for the squirrel cage induction generators. But later, uh, um, by 2000, around 98 to 2000, uh, the variable speed machine scale, that is DFIG. All of you might have heard this name, DFIG and the PMSG, permanent magnet generators and uh, uh, WFED induction generators. That was the next generation. Today, you find uh, only manufacturers of DFIG or PMG. No, uh, there is no production at all for squirrel cage uh, machine. And along with the PM, PMSG or PMG, both are the same permanent magnet generator. You can have the ordinary alternators as a generator if uh, uh, the, with the same principle that was as a variable speed machine can be used, variable voltage, variable frequency mode. And then uh, uh, in the 90s itself, uh, we got uh, this new avatar of squirrel cage induction generator, that is, squirrel cage induction generator connected to the grid through an asynchronous link so that variable voltage, variable frequency operation is possible. Unfortunately, it didn't survive there, but it was the and uh, latest uh, development is perhaps the uh, brushless version of DFIG. DFIG is popular. Now, the brushless DFIG, that's uh, the researchers have brought it out, but is to be commercialized. We will see in detail these. Uh, before that, we can classify these into two sections. One is uh, the fixed speed machines, that is squirrel cage machine. It's called a fixed speed machine. All other machines are variable speed machine. Now, why do you call it a fixed speed machine? Uh, you can uh, see that uh, this is a squirrel cage machine, the smaller diagram, but still you can see that this is the turbine and uh, uh, say this is a generator. In between, there's a gear. The gear is essential in these systems if the generator runs at a high speed. For example, induction, squirrel cage machine, induction machine, four pole machine means 1500 RPM. It will dictate uh, the speed uh, and the turbine will be forced to run at that speed. That is a bit challenging for our structural engineers, structural design of the uh, support. That's a tower and foundation. So that's where we want to keep the turbine speed. In turbine, RPM should be less, small. So uh, a gear is used. Uh, 1 is to 50 was a gear ratio used uh, earlier days. These days, 1 is to 100 is also used. Now, um, you look at the induction machine. And uh, an induction machine with a motor or generator, usually uh, its variation speed is much less from no load to full load, three to five percent slip. That's a normal case. Well, uh, machines, or squirrel cage machines, use as induction generators in a, along with wind turbine, uh, are sometimes designed for slightly higher uh, uh, slip, that is around a 10 percent, but still. The range is not high. If it is uh, your ordinary induction machine, if you consider, uh, say, a 50 to 60 RPM change only will be there from the no load to full load. Isn't it? The full load synchronous speed is 1500 RPM. So it's a full load speed will be around 1440 RPM, around that only. And you consider the variation in speed on the turbine side, 1 is to 50 ratio or 1 is to 100 ratio, it's much less than 1 RPM. That's why it's called a fixed speed machine. Whereas now, what is a variable speed machine? Variable speed machine, the range of uh, speed, RPM, that will be vary. Uh, permanent magnet machine you know, or a synchronous alternator, if it is allowed to operate without synchronizing in an asynchronous mode, then it's a variable voltage, variable frequency operation, means variable speed operation. Um, that's the case with a uh, slipping uh, induction machine uh, used as the uh, DFIG WFID machine. I will come to that. So, what is the advantage of variable speed operation? Let me tell you first. This relation of lambda uh, uh, we have seen, and you have omega on the numerator and the wind speed V at the denominator. 
the range of omega is less in square cage machine. So that's the reason the cut in wind speed, it starts operation from here. When wind speed increases, lambda decreases, so it uh, changes like this up to, uh, say, the rated wind speed. And above rated wind speed, we have to reduce it. So the entire uh, traversal, the average efficiency will be low. So instead, uh, suppose you have uh, an omega that is increasing along with V, with the increase in V and decreasing when V decreases, swaying along with wind speed. In that case, say the cut-in, if we bring it very close to uh, you know, this point, the max, the design lambda point, uh, and with increase in wind speed, there will not be much increase in omega. Of course, after the rated wind speed, it has to be reduced. So if you consider the average efficiency, that is higher. So this is the advantage of variable speed wind speed, and that's why uh, uh, getting it, uh, proving it in on the field, people have moved from the squirrel cage machine to DFIG and PMG. Quickly uh, look at the squirrel cage induction generator. It has the turbine connected to uh, the in generator through a gear, and uh, the stator is directly connected, that is um, synchronously connected to the grid. And uh, squirrel cage machine, you know, it needs uh, capacitors, that is, uh, for providing. Uh, the magnetization, uh, uh, that means it's magnetized from the grid. So compensating for the power factor, you need the capacitors. DWIG or double winding, that's a version of squirrel cage induction machine only. The only difference is that you have two windings, one four pole and uh, another six pole. So one of the two winds, when you start with a low wind speed, at cutting wind speed, it's better to have a, a low power, low loss winding, that will be a six pole winding. So spore winding means the synchronous speed is 1000 RPM. So quickly you can cross that. Yeah. The machine starts as a motor. That is to be the point to be noted here. Yeah. This is an induction machine. It's connected to the uh, grid. So as a motor, it will start. At the same time, wind is the So the wind turbine will provide another torque. So with the two you know, torques provided to that, one is electrically, other is mechanically, naturally the speed of the rotor will increase the induction machine rotor speed will increase and it will cross the signal speed and it becomes the generator. So it cannot start as a generator, starts as a motor and in case wind is there, it will come into the super synchronous mode and it will be uh, operating there. So there, it is advantageous to have this uh, combination of four pole and six pole. Uh, at low wind speeds, it will be using the six pole winding of lower rating. At a high wind speed, it will be using the four pole winding. Um, and then uh, came the DFIG. In DFIG, this is the case actually, the stator that is directly connected, synchronously connected, but rotor, DFIG means the bound rotor induction machine. So the rotor winding that is through uh, this asynchronous link that is connected to the grid again. Asynchronous link means there's a machine side converter that is AC to DC, then there's a DC link, and then there's a grid side converter the grid side converter will be grid tied. I mean, uh, it will be operating in the grid tied uh, mode, that is the grid frequency and grid voltage. So, uh, you know that suppose it produces a power, it passes a power, say P, from the stator and it's operating at a slip S, then the power uh, taken from the rotor that will be slip times P. So, you get from the same machine additional power you are getting. This is in the super synchronous mode, I am uh, telling. Because the operation is similar, if you consider that, uh, initially it starts as a motor, later with the help of the wind, the wind turbine is offering additional torque and it becomes, it, it comes into super synchronous mode. Yeah. Uh, then there will be power output from the stator, uh, that is P, and power output from the rotor, that is slip times P. So total addition, say, uh, if it is a one megawatt uh, machine, one megawatt power will be going from the stator at rated wind speed and above that. And if it's operating at a 30% slip, 300 watts will be going from uh, the rotor. So that 1 plus 3, 1.3 megawatt will be getting from uh, that machine. So that is the advantage, the additional power, more power. So uh, people shifted from SEIG to DFIG. DFIG, uh, we should also mention that it has uh, uh, four modes of operation. Um, uh, that is, the usually the uh, machine, induction machine will be having the motoring, that is a sub-synchronous motoring. 
and uh, super synchronous generation. We are familiar with that. Um, in super synchronous generation, uh, I told you that is uh, PM is the mechanical power given uh, to the shaft. From that, the rotor, sorry, the stator winding, that is PS, this will be taken out from the stator. In addition to that, at uh, the slip, the rotor power also will be taken. So the total input power is PM. Uh, that will be equal to PS plus PR. Uh, that is the super synchronous operation. For this, um, uh, it, it has to the speed has to come to the above the synchronous speed. So usually, what happens inside the machine? You have a, when we excite the state of winding of the induction machine, there's a rotating magnetic field that's at synchronous speed. And you know that uh, the rotor magnetic field uh, that will be lagging. That, that's a slip and the motoring action. Uh, when there is no power input from through the rotor, uh, through the shaft. But when you give uh, a power uh, through that, even uh, this is the case actually, even in the subsynchronous mode also the generation is possible. Why? That's called a subsynchronous generation. Supersynchronous generation, subsynchronous generation. Supersynchronous generation is very logical. You understand that the machine is originally in the motoring mode and additional power is given by the wind turbine as a mechanical torque. So the speed increases, comes to the super synchronous uh, region, naturally it will be generating. Uh, but sub synchronous generation is possible with the DFIT. Uh, uh, how? When the machine, the induction machine operates as a motor, there the you know, rotor uh, magnetic field that is lagging or the state magnetic field that is leading the air gap the rotating magnetic field that's called the motoring action generating action means the other way around it has to when the rotor speed exceeds the synchronous speed then the rotor magnetic field attached to that that will be leading and that is how the power flow is reversed and it becomes a generator now uh, in the sub synchronous mode also when the speed is sub synchronous below synchronous even then there is a possibility to increase the speed of the rotor magnetic field how if you look at this uh, diagram, uh, see the power input is coming here and from the stator, this is a stator output. A part of that, uh, if we are reversing feedback and through an, an inverter, we are injecting uh, that into the rotor. What are we injecting? We are injecting a voltage and a frequency and we have the freedom to decide this frequency. So the rotor is rotating. On top of that, a frequency is injected. So together, we can produce that rotor magnetic field that will be yielding. That becomes means generation is happening there. That is the sub generation. Now, uh, this is the brushless mode of DFIG. DFIG, the uh, major concern was the brush. Like any machine, even DC machines also suffer that. The uh, alternator is also having the, the problem. You are having slippings and brush. To avoid that, uh, uh, in the brushless version, uh, yeah, in the brushless version, both the windings, you know, there are two windings on the stator. One is called a synchronous winding, other is called asynchronous winding. It has the rotor. The rotor is uh, shown here. See, it's a special rotor, nested loop rotor. The two windings on the stator will be having two different uh, holes. There are certain combinations of the number of holes with which it uh, first induced uh, onto the rotor and uh, gets it back onto the second winding that is the uh, asynchronous winding. That asynchronous winding is connected asynchronously uh, to that. So the same effect of uh, uh, DFIG even this is in the research uh, mode today. There are a number of papers you can see uh, but yet to be commercialized. But then it will have an attraction in future because it is uh, it is it's giving a sp uh, slip range uh, even beyond 30%. The conventionally, traditional DFIG bound rotor induction machine, today's DFIGs are operating up to a slip of 30%. But then with a, a, a brushless version, that is possible and even beyond that without uh, the brushes and slipping. So that's why uh, this is you know, viewed as an option for future. And uh, the permanent magnet generator, PMG or PMSG, that is, uh, you know, the uh, having the advantage of having a number of poles, many number of poles. Yeah. And in this diagram, it is uh, showing a gear, but uh, actually for PMSG, this gear will be absent. You can directly, as is shown in this diagram, this is a machine, The uh, you know, the ring, you are seeing that's a generator and this is a rotor. 
there's a wind turbine will be directly coupled with the uh, generator so that uh, the speed what is required why are we using the uh, gear to reduce the speed of the generator so to reduce the speed of the generator we have to go for large number of poles and that is possible only with a permanent magnet and uh, if you do that 140 160 poles you can reduce the speed and you can avoid the gear and becomes compact but then uh, this will be allowed to operate in a free mode, variable voltage, variable frequency mode, uh, and then uh, connect to the uh, grid asynchronously. First, a rectifier, converting that variable frequency, variable voltage into DC, and then a grid tidy inverter. That will be that will ensure that uh, power is transferred to the grid. Um, uh, it can work uh, means uh, from the cutting wind speed onwards in the generator mode. It can work. Of course, the power curve will be similar. Will be increasing up to rated wind speed. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't have a motoring mode. And uh, wherever this asynchronous link is, the whether it is DFIG or PMG, power factor is not an issue. Even for induction machine, power factor is not an issue. In that voltage injected, we can uh, adjust a control the its a uh, phase uh, angle and power factor can be import or export or unity power factor. Anything is possible because of the variable speed. Both the both these varieties they have a high uh generation efficiency is uh, high that's why these are preferred of course permanent magnet machine is very costly uh, compared to uh, the ordinary spiral cage machine but because of the high generation uh, you know, that cost is worth or means the returns will be higher and then even we have uh, again that's a spiral cage induction machine also can be connected asynchronously uh, it's not that uh, uh, it cannot be operated like the uh, the, the PMG. So here a gear is required because the machine, you cannot increase the number of poles. La very large number of poles will end up with much less uh, efficiency. So gear has to be there. Otherwise, the ACDCAC asynchronous link and the VVVF operation that is possible. Uh, as I told you, uh, in the research literature, if you look, uh, maximum number of papers are on this. But unfortunately, the manufacturers uh, were less and that too, uh, today there is no manufacturer for this machine. It may come back, but we do not know. And then, uh, yeah, there are uh, some such special uh, efforts were also done in the past. Here, it's using a wound rotor induction machine, but not as DFIG. On the stator, uh, then an external resistance is used so that, suppose, you know, when the power ramping is there, that's the wind speed is increasing, uh, suddenly, uh, a spike, uh, a surge is coming. So to avoid that, that is objectionable. See, there are power ramping uh, uh, codes or the restrictions are there in electricity code. So to help that, in case of a power ramping, d by d by dt of p exceeds certain limit. Uh, at that time, they will the uh, the machine will transfer that extra power. Means it will increase the slip. So that extra power will go to the rotor side, the rotor resistors, and it will be uh, burnt. So such efforts are also there. Uh, otherwise, a major uh, concern previously uh, regarding uh, wind electric generator was this LVRT issue, FRT, fault right through or low voltage right through issue. It is sold. All the machines today, uh, the commercial machines uh, available are all having uh, facilities or uh, solutions for LVRT. Uh, but still, further improvements are required and it may be possible. So let me explain it. What is the issue and what are the current solutions? FRT or LVRT requirement means the wind turbine generator should remain grid connected during the fault period. You know that when a fault occurs, then during the fault period, till it is cleared, at that time, the, uh, the feeder voltage will come down, the grid voltage will come down. So the grid voltage drops heavily during the fault period. So reduction in the grid voltage, yeah, that restricts injection of power to the grid, whereas wind turbine will need to extract the same amount of power from wind as before the fault. Understand uh, the situation. See, the power injected into the grid, that is, of course, the product of voltage, current, and power factor, isn't it? So there, when the voltage is suddenly reduced, uh, and then it will be immediately, it will be difficult uh, 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 for the grid inverter of the turbine generator to adjust for that voltage and uh, uh, pump in the same power. Very large current will be required when there is a fault. That's not possible. Not only that, usually the inverters or the wind turbine generators uh, you know, will trip when the voltage falls. So the grid voltage falls beyond, say, 10%, it will trip. That is a present arrangement. 
So what happens? You know, there is a fault. The grid voltage drop. Immediately, the wind turbine generator trip. Now, uh, in four or five cycles, uh, that's a, in a few milliseconds, uh, in several milliseconds, the grid is, the fault is clear. Uh, so the uh, issue, the fault right through or the LVRT issue is that uh, if the wind farms are contributing to the power generation in a grid and when a uh, fault occurs, if the wind farms, the wind generator strip, then once the fault is cleared, the power balancing will be uh, a greater issue. Generation will be short. So that's why the grid codes are asking the generators, wind generators to ride through. When the fault is there, okay, for some time, be there in the uh, uh, line. Yeah. That is, this is the uh, requirement, the grid code. Yeah. The voltage is fine up to this, then there is a voltage coming down say up to 20 percent it is uh, falling and then at least here it is saying 625 milliseconds it should uh, wait after that okay uh, it can uh, trip actually so this is called uh, the lvrt requirement uh, that is waiting for the fault to be cleared now if it is cleared within five six cycles when you say 625 milliseconds means um, it's a uh, uh, six seven cycles so usually the uh, uh, fault clearance will uh, happen in five six uh, cycles so uh, if um, uh, this is a requirement uh, and uh, uh, i told you this is the case actually a practical uh, record so this was published uh, uh, in power and energy it's showing that say this is the power the wind farm power generator here the fault occurs and uh, it uh, trips so after that there is no power generation Whereas you see the grid voltage, the voltage during the fall period, the voltage came down, but uh, uh, with the clearance, the voltage has uh, come up. Uh, but uh, what has happened, uh, the uh, the load is not met. This is not the wind farms are not there. As a result, uh, the grid voltage is rising. Even that affects the grid voltage control is reactive power control. Earlier, when the wind farms were operating, the reactive power, it was consuming reactive power. Now, that is not the, that is also the issue. So, uh, grid operation becomes uh, difficult uh, if FRT capability is not uh, provided. FRT capability um, is provided, uh, uh, these are the grid codes or different countries, they suggested different, as uh, so 100 seconds, 625 milliseconds, not 100 seconds, 100 milliseconds, like that different uh, requirements are there in uh, different countries. Yeah. Uh, now the solutions look at the present solutions there are two comments as regards to excuse me sir yes uh, sir what does that lvrt stands for low voltage right through that is when a fault occurs the voltage grid voltage goes low so during the low voltage period it has to ride through that that's what uh, uh, it's showing here this blue line the fault occurs at this point so voltage is coming down so during then for some time till the fault clearance the grid voltage is low. So during the low voltage, the conventional generators will not trip. They will wait uh, and uh, it will resume power. When the fault is cle cleared, all the generators should remain connected. So for wind farms, uh, the earlier designs were such that whenever there is a fall in the grid voltage, immediately it will trip. Yeah. And that was creating the problem of the uh, generators. Sufficient generation will not be there once the fault is cleared. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And sir, what is the grid code uh, for India? What is the time duration for that? Uh, I think it is 600. Yeah. Uh, 600, sir. 600 milliseconds. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Now, now it is essential that uh, anyone goes for the installation, the electrical inspectorate will come and uh, check it, actually. There, it has to be demonstrated that uh, uh, LVRT is the, the capability is the. Yeah. Now, uh, these are uh, as a solutions. There are two things actually. The first one you see voltage support at PCC using statcom, supercapacitor, etc. When um, uh, this happens, uh, the, the two issues are there. One, post fault. Once the fault is cleared, then after that, uh, um, you the supply should be there. So right through should be there. Machine should be ready to supply after that. That is there. But during the fault, uh, this um, reactive power supply. That is what's one way. If you can. You know, provide the reactive power support, you know, the voltage support through reactive or through statcom. That is you know, one suggestion normally uh, utilities give. And for the machine, actually, for the wind farm, what will it do 
the power which is taken from the, through the turbine from the wind or extracted by the turbine that should be diverted to somewhere else if it cannot give it to uh, the generator either that power should be reduced active power reduction whether it is possible or whether that power can be dumped somewhere so this crowbar solution is mostly done by the uh, people that is similar to that uh, as the, this case i explained earlier if you have rotor resistance uh, on the uh, external resistance connected and then you can uh, dump that power it's called a crowbar on the rotor instead of this is dfid instead of uh, passing the power onto the grid uh, you uh, change it actually in case of the lvr uh, uh, fault issue for uh, right through you burn part of the power locally in the crossbar so that from the turbine the power will be coming here less power only will be given to the grid this that's the solution and uh, for if that uh, the reactive power support or the voltage support when you say the stat pump uh, the inverter used in that that should be having the capability of reactive power now what does it mean if the inverter is loaded by active power up to this level the blue line up to this level then it won't be able to give any reactive power support suppose the if this is the active power then okay the reactive power can be this is the capacity the volt ampere rating of the inverter within that uh, if active power uh, load uh, uh, is uh, not full actually less then reactive power is possible uh, supply is possible that's not connected with the wind generator but uh, the static of the uh, uh, inverter yeah this is the crowbar connection with the dfig uh, a diversion uh, will be given and uh, uh, through this uh, uh, rectified and uh, say a control switch uh, soft switch can be provided so that the amount of power burned uh, the power is burned in this uh, resistor this is called the crowbar even in a, a dfig another method is that you know this is the rotor side converter sorry yeah rotor side converter means yeah this one this converter there are two converters this is rotor side one this is the grid side one in between this dc link you can see here in the dc link if you add a dc chopper a buck chopper you can reduce the voltage and then in that case the power uh, transferred through the rotor circuit to the grid can be reduced that is but this is also limited the amount of power that is limited uh, here so these are the two solutions uh, currently available uh, commercially but then if you uh, um, just to remember what we were discussing uh, in the beginning that is a turbine and uh, the turbine control what i mean to say is that if the turbine blades that's a pitch control um, uh, you know the pitch angle decides the efficiency cp power coefficient of the turbine so during the fault uh, if we if we can use the pitch control you know, then the power conversion of the turbine turbine will not extract more power from that but then there's a difficulty in that so this slide uh, uh, this is regarding the wind turbine braking mechanism i i explain i'm explaining it uh, to make you understand that the difficult the challenge in the uh, pitch control well wind turbine braking doesn't mean that you just apply a brake see there is a mechanical brake in a, every wind turbine generator so this is the mechanical brake so a hydraulic brake system is there but you cannot apply the brake when it is machine see a single machine 2 megawatt or 3 megawatt if you apply the brake only once you apply it will not stop at that even the brake pads will fly away yeah but you cannot apply the brake so for that there's a procedure as for the procedure first it is the aerodynamic braking that is pitch control you rotate the blades you know the design pitch angle usually it will be 5 to 7 degrees and if you increase the pitch angle say if it is 90 degrees absolutely no lift force will be there so power cannot be extracted from the wind by the turbine at a high pitch angle so if you change the pitch angle then so power will not be extracted then your control you know there is a your motor and the entire tower can be turned away the turbine will not be facing wind it will be uh, uh, turned away from the wind so what if you after the first and second step then there will be hardly any force in the turbine it will not be uh, it can be easily stopped just arrest there is no force in that there is no power in that we only need to it's a free wheeling so to arrest that only the hydraulic braking is done so this is the braking procedure so you understand now what is the power what is the capability of pitch control in braking without pitch control you cannot you cannot do the braking well earlier when uh, uh, wind turbine generators of uh, 200 or 500 kilowatt and less were used then 
uh, pitch control was rare actually. Today, in the megawatt level machines, so most of the machines are having pitch control. If pitch control is there, now the question is that for LVRT, that's fall right through capability, can we think of uh, 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 pitch control to uh, reduce the power intake? The, uh, there is a challenge. The challenge is that, yeah, what you are seeing here, this is uh, the arrangement for the pitch control. Um, uh, you know, there's a motor inside and it rotates actually. So, this is, yeah, this is uh, uh, that uh, uh, blade, uh, root of the blade uh, that will be protected by the pitch motor. Now, uh, if pitch, pitch control is done, so braking pitch control is done, for generation control, generation control means active power control, there is another requirement uh, by electricity code, grid code. Uh, sometimes when there is no power requirement, then you may have to reduce generation. Now, so in such cases, if you do pitch control, the pitch control is very slow. I told you that from 5 degrees to 90 degrees, you have to change the pitch uh, several seconds, means um, one or two minutes you may have to wait. Very slow only uh, it works. Why? Because the blade from the root, uh, from the, uh, from the see the blade is long like this. So this is this end is called uh, the root and this is called the tip. Now from the tip to the root, uh, the force inside the lift force it is catching. That force is different. So the stress on the blade is different. Now, now when you are rotating the blade for pitch control, now the the stress and the strain will be high and there can be shearing. The blade will may fail. So that's why very slowly only this is done. Earlier days, the hydraulic systems were in use for the pitch control and these days very recently maybe in the last five or few more years variable speed auto speed where it is used for pitch control even then it is doing now what i suggest is that there is scope for a pitch control with a, a, a feedback from the blade we need to there should be a sensor to, uh, to measure the stress on the blade at every point means starting from the root uh, up to the tip at the different points, it will be very that uh, stress should be measured. And uh, if uh, keeping that uh, stress value within limits, we can decide the speed of the VSD. If such a system can be developed, that will be very helpful for braking, for generation control, for uh, even for fault right through. Yeah, uh, we had some discussion, and uh, let us have some discussion on the standalone. Uh, machine also half an hour left uh, so um, this is more important especially future technology you know uh, excuse me sir yeah uh, sir, uh, sir, can you, sir can you explain once again how we, how can we control the pitch for the braking purpose of wind turbine uh, how can we control means um, you are asking about the present system that each blade is rotated at the root of the blade uh, blade uh, there's a motor so that's what is shown in, in here actually there's a motor and uh, that will be rotating the blade from the root all the three motors uh, will be synchronized yeah so uh, that rotating the blade means the pitch angle is changing that's called a pitch angle. okay what else you wanted to know it's fine sir. fine thank you okay yeah so what i was telling uh, is that uh, uh, so far wind turbine generator means large uh, grid connected machines only small machines or medium machines or even uh, standalone machines are not not a commercial success this is mainly because it's a dynamic system you know in standalone mode whatever power is produced that should be absorbed and wind is fluctuating so power production will be varying and you cannot get a load that can absorb that other than a heater sort of thing um, means a room heater or space heating uh, or a pump a variable uh, output pump so that is why even if it's a battery once the battery is full what will you do so there were issues uh, in the past that uh, small machines one kilowatt five kilowatt such machines um, uh, used as aero charges battery charging but once the battery is full and uh, the owner or the operator will not know that the battery is full what happens the uh, wind turbine will continue to work and finally the blades will fly away because of the uh, kinetic uh, energy means the centrifugal force will increase because the power is not absorbed by the battery that's the issue in the standalone but you know as your program is on microgrid distributed generation 
So distributed generation tomorrow, we have to provide wind generators for that. We have to provide wind generators for the microgrid. We cannot, uh, so far, okay, if it is grid connected generation, this is uh, okay. The present technologies are okay. But for future, we have to be uh, more uh, careful. Well, you look at this is, um, um, uh, we, we have these two machines, that is permanent magnet generator and a DFIG. Let's see uh, what fits uh, well in a standalone application or microgrid application. So here I'm showing uh, the PMSG, that is, let's say, uh, wind turbine uh, connected to directly coupled to the PMSG and then a rectified, uh, then inverter, and that AC power is going to the load. This is okay, but when the wind speed varies, then the power output will vary. Um, so how can you regulate the voltage? So you need an energy storage here, and only through the charge discharge control uh, of that uh, energy storage at, uh, at the load point at PCC. Uh, that is essential. Now, uh, yeah, that's a, a, it's a method suggested here. Uh, this is a small wind turbine generator with an electronic load control. ELC, electronic load controller, is used in small hydro also. Uh, some of you might be knowing. The same principle is here. Uh, uh, you see the turbine and uh, permanent magnet generator. Mostly the small machines are, most of them are using permanent magnet uh, generator today. No other machine uh, is suitable there. That is the present technology, uh, not the future, the present. So it is rectified and uh, a load. There is a load. Now, here is the issue is that is the, the voltage will be fluctuating. Load terminal voltage will be fluctuating with change in wind speed. Why? Because whatever power is converted, the load has a fixed resistance. So to push that power into that, the voltage has to be increased. You know, power will be V squared by R now for a, a resistive load. So V has to vary. Now, what we can do, how can we, we cannot connect a standard, a regular load in this mode. Or any load you say will be having a, a rated voltage. We cannot exceed that. Even it cannot be less than that. By keeping a battery to some extent, uh, you can control it. But once the battery is fully charged or when the battery is drained, you can't uh, help it. So there is a dummy load control required here. What's a dummy load control? Dummy load is connected as a parallel load. The regular load is the, and then you are connecting a parallel load. And uh, uh, it's DC actually. You are using a chopper. A buck chopper can be used. You vary the duty ratio of the chopper, so the voltage applied to the dummy load will vary, so the power absorbed uh, by the dummy load will vary. So what is the requirement? See, some power is taken from here, say P, and uh, what is required uh, in our load is PL. Now, if P is greater than PL, that P minus PL, that should be the power given to this dummy load. So this uh, will be reflected as the voltage across uh, the load. So we can have a controller where this voltage will be monitored, and then um, based on that error, the voltage error, uh, the, uh, the 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 chopper uh, duty ratio of the chopper can be incremented or decremented. It's an easy control only. So this is uh, you know, one simple way. There are several ways by this uh, by which the load voltage can be regulated, but it is essential in standard. That's a major challenge. Well, even hydrogen uh, electrolyzer for producing hydrogen instead of a battery, you can have it. And even the other way also, it's possible. Other way around means, see here actually, hydrogen is here. There's a regular load. So <clears throat> you can use, you can regulate the wind turbine generator voltage by varying the hydrogen production as the dummy load you can use it. Otherwise, you can produce a hydrogen at a constant rate by using the other uh, load. But, uh, many possibilities are there. I'm <coughs> discussing this because, you know, that... Uh, um, storage schemes other than battery. Similarly, hydrogen itself as a replacement uh, for fuel and transport fuel. Um, uh, when we consider that, uh, hydrogen production from renewable energy is a separate topic. So, wind uh, will play a, a role the, in the future. Ag again, coming back, uh, that uh, PMSD, if you are using in the autonomous mode, this is the PCC. So, uh, the turbine, the generator, the rectifier and the inverter. Now, at the PCC, different loads we have. If you have a deferable load or a number of deferable load, deferable load means say a load that you can use whenever you want, like a, 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 a bat, a EV, EV charging. If EV is available for to you for the next 10 hours, but its charging will take only half an hour. But all through the 10 hours, these are available. 
So you can uh, defer it whenever you want, you can use that. That is, or even water pumps also can be used like that. So if deferable loads are there, this power balancing can be done. Otherwise, power balancing is a major issue for that. You need energy storage and it's job discharge control. Yeah. So PMG, permanent magnet generator, is the uh, only solution so far uh, commercially people used in standalone mode. But then in research, you can now find uh, DFIG coming there also in the standalone mode. Look at uh, the case here. So here, yeah. uh, first of all, DFIG can challenge BMSG. Why? Permanent magnet generator is a very costly affair. You know, the rare earth magnets. And uh, if you are an environmentalist, it's a, there is a big concern uh, behind uh, the mining of rare earth mag magnets. How long you can go? That's another issue. China has monopolized data. That's why the permanent magnet cost is such high. You know, so many issues are the uh, social issues. Technically, uh, it's costly and DFIG can bring a solution here also, challenging uh, permanent magnet or replacing permanent magnet. And uh, uh, that is viable also. Means a simplified solution is possible. And DFIG, it has a unique uh, capability of uh, regulating the voltage, state of voltage and frequency. In case of permanent magnet generator, you need to have a separate uh, uh, system for that. But in DFIG, it's an uh, inbuilt solution is possible. Anyway, you see that this is the turbine and uh, the DFIG. Uh, it's a stator, the load, that's AC load connect, connected to the stator slide. On the rotor side, there is a converter. Uh, uh, and uh, from the stator, you have to, this converter means it produces DC, that DC can be stored in the battery. Or, uh, you know, if you remember, there are two modes of operation uh, uh, for uh, um, uh, the DFIG. Earlier, we discussed the subsynchronous and supersynchronous. Supersynchronous means <coughs> on the left hand side, you see here. The DFIG, <coughs> the turbine power, that is PM, the turbine is giving the power to the machine, to the stator, PS is going out, through the rotor also, there is a uh, inverter converter you have seen, uh, through that it is going to the uh, rotor side. The rotor side can be connected to DC bus, uh, stator side can be connected to AC bus. Yeah. In super synchronous operation, this will be possible. So what, what is super synchronous operation? That happens at a high wind or a, a low load. That is, your mag mechanical power is greater than the stator power. The other way, when mechanical power uh, is not sufficient, yeah, the your uh, AC side, the load demand is higher than what is available from the wind. Then from the DC side, you have a battery there. From the DC side, through this converter, you can feed power onto that, and again, balancing is possible. This is uh, effectively this is working as generator, and that will be the subsynchronous uh, mode. So that is subsynchronous generation, super synchronous generation. These two are possible with the uh, DFIG on in the standalone mode. I'll explain it a bit more in detail. Uh, you all of you are familiar. Yes. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, in super synchronous mode, like uh, if the machine is like turbine is continuously running in super synchronous mode, then it will continuously charge the batteries. So, will there be any provision of like cutoff of the battery charging when the battery? I'll, 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 I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, be uh, before that, uh, let me briefly. What is the control? That regulation. Uh, there are several methods of voltage and frequency regulation available in the literature. Uh, I am presenting here something that we have done or my uh, scholar has re uh, recently done. Uh, it can be done very simply. Uh, you are seeing the equivalent circuit of uh, the induction machine. Here, um, you know, this is the rotor side and this is the stator side. And uh, this equation for stator voltage, this equation can be written. All the basic equation, if you combine it, you can bring it in this form. Or what I am telling here, this stator voltage uh, is a function of three things. Rotor speed, rotor injected voltage. Rotor injected voltage, no, we are uh, injecting voltage from the rotor side. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the load. These three are the variables here. Now, uh, load change is probable. Wind change is also probable. In both the cases, rotor speed will vary. Yeah, but still, you can keep this 
Vs, that is a stator voltage constant, if you adjust with the rotor injected voltage. That is, Vs can be kept constant if uh, rotor injected voltage is such varied that uh, it can counteract the effect of uh, speed, rotor speed change. Rotor speed change can be because of the wind speed change or the load change. Um, so, uh, if you do that, then uh, your uh, you know, voltage, state of voltage uh, will be uh, coming as constant. What are you doing here? You are having, see, this is the machine. On the rotor side, you are having a, a converter. Yeah. So, this can send DC power to the battery or otherwise, if we want, we can send power from the battery, you can inject that into this. Also, there is a possibility to circulate power like this. See, from the stator power produced, through this it can be circulated. All these possibilities are the uh, in this arrangement. With that, uh, that control is possible. I will I'll, I'll continue before you ask the next question. How can this be done? Uh, we are calling it as dynamic frequency tracker, DFT. Yeah. Uh, how is it done? There are There is a feed forward control and a feed back control. Feed forward means you are uh, searching, uh, means monitoring the speed here, the uh, speed. And then now uh, previously you saw this expression, uh, this expression that is the second one. This is the rotor speed, omega, the rotor frequency that is obtained uh, as a stator frequency and uh, omega m means a mechanical angular speed of the sharp speed. So that means for uh, uh, if you monitor the shaft speed, if you monitor the shaft uh, speed, that is omega m, yeah, and uh, you want to maintain omega as a stator frequency, then what is the corresponding rotor frequency required? Always you can find out. Simply do that. That is what is done here. You are monitoring the rotor speed and you are finding out what is the reference, rotor frequency reference that you know. And uh, according to the, the speed, you are giving that a reference to the PWM generator for this inverter. Feed uh, back. Uh, here actually, uh, the usual uh, uh, PLA will be there. You are monitoring the voltage and you know that uh, there is what is the voltage required, say 400 volt. The reference voltage is the you have an error through the PA and then there is a V by F actually. We have to keep V by F constant. Through that you can decide it. Very simply and very fast control of the voltage and frequency is possible. Yeah. And where, where, where you, the question you were asking, how can you control it? You can consider a grid, a microgrid. So I am showing here a hybrid microgrid. What do you mean by a hybrid microgrid? That has, that has a, uh, AC network and DC network. That means there is AC load and DC load. These days, many appliances are available in DC. So in microgrids, you need uh, AC network and DC network. So that uh, that way we call it a hybrid microgrid. And it is autonomous. Autonomous means it's not connected to the grid. You are having the DFIT and its generation here. Yeah. And you are having for PV, solar photovoltaics here. You have battery here and the deferable uh, load um, DC load is the deferable load, a pump. Now, also, uh, I'm considering here. So, here the uh, PV will be generating, it will be giving, um, it can be operated at a maximum power point tracking or off MPP. For that, this control is the, and the battery, this bidirectional control of the uh, battery will regulate the voltage, the DC voltage. Yeah. And uh, uh, DFIG will be regulating the AC voltage. There is any excess power on the AC side that can be sent to the DC through this bidirectional converter. Or if there is any excess uh, power on the uh, DC side that can be sent here. That way, uh, in, in the autonomous mode, it can work. Yeah. Now, you, if you have the question, you can ask. This was the... Uh, um, the, whatever I explained, uh, um, those in a um, simulation, um, the, it was verified. That is, the super singleness and sub singleness. How does it happen? You consider here the wind speed is changing here. 
the wind speed is changing initially and uh, the red graph that is a rotor speed actually initially it was in supersonic mode with reduction in the wind speed since it is trying for the voltage regulation automatically it comes to the subsonic generation so the um, uh, supersonic uh, speed and subsonic speed it has changed and that is ref reflecting um, everywhere this is the the power changes are happening but the voltages are maintained actually voltage regulation both the uh, rotor side and stator side well uh, you know the supersynchronous operation and subsynchronous operation of the dfig what's the difference in supersynchronous operation power will be taken from the rotor and will be sent to the dc side outwards in subsynchronous operation power will be injected onto the rotor that is the difference so that is obvious here uh, to reverse the power flow the phase sequence uh, is changed will change so these are the uh, things um, uh, let me know if there are some questions on this the uh, stand alone part is also over now um, uh, uh, i will conclude that in stand alone mode in microgrids so far we have been using permanent magnetic generator but in future this dfig stand alone dfig is a much uh, powerful technology uh, competent technology for the microgrids uh, even in autonomous mode in future any question on that you can ask questions now in between also you are asking questions but then yeah then uh, yeah, um, in that case let me continue i'll finish it and we'll give a question and answer uh, session uh, 10 minutes uh, let me continue for another 5 minutes ma'am is it is that okay uh, yes yes yeah now uh, uh, one another research area I means where you will find a lot of papers and uh, many people uh, getting confused is the maximum power point tracking in wind turbine generator here we should know that mppt in wind is very different from mppt in solar uh, in solar there is only one generator this electrical direct uh, electric power so there actually the maximum power generation that is uh, easy you know how it is done i am not to describe that but uh, uh, when it comes to wind turbine generator what we are uh, telling is that you know the uh, this is the power curve and uh, this is that characteristic of the wind turbine cp lambda characteristic the MPPT means help the turbine to operate at this point, the maximum power point, maximum efficiency point, not maximum power point, maximum power at the respective wind speed. That is, uh, allow the wind turbine to operate at its uh, maximum efficiency point, CP max point. That is MPPT. Uh, and uh, uh, how you can do this, say this is a cut in wind speed, this is a rated wind speed. During this range of wind speed, you can uh, maximize the efficiency, maximize the CP. But beyond that, it's not possible. Remember that MPPT is not meant uh, beyond the rated wind speed. Why? Because it is by reducing CP, we are regulating the power in this region. And MPPT means maximizing CP. So it's not applicable, it's applicable only for this region. That's one point. Another point uh, is that you look at uh, what is the rated wind speed here, sorry, cutting wind speed here, it's around three meters and uh, the rated wind speed maybe 12 12 14 uh, 15 like that it comes in. consider that this is three and this is 12 meters per second that means 400 percent is the increase in the wind speed what do we want we want to keep lambda tip speed ratio constant isn't it keep lambda constant at this, uh, this so that the efficiency will be constant at its maximum value that is the principle of mppt yeah and if lambda has to be constant, uh, then uh, when the wind speed V increases 400 uh, percentage, then so four times, omega also should increase by four times. That's what uh, I mentioned here. If V R equal to four V C, that's rated wind speed is four times cutting wind speed. Maximum speed of generator should be four times its minimum speed. Do you uh, have a, a such generator in mind? Squirrel cage induction machine, it's a speed change is uh, 3 to 5 percent to 10 percent. DFIG speed change is 30 percent. Well, DFIG, if you operate on a super synchronous and then sub synchronous together, 30 plus 30, 60 percent speed change is possible. But the uh, uh, MPPT is asking for 400 percent, 300 percent in that level. So the only possibility is with the PMG. Yeah, it doesn't mean that with the DFIG you cannot have a uh, 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 MPPT you can have in a limited range 
let me quickly explain these two. That's MPPT in a um, in a turbine PMSG. That's a the case easy uh, case. So here, what do what does it mean? Well, uh, you have the turbine. So the turbine power that should be maximized. Half row AV cube into so that CP should be maximum. Then you know this is the uh, generator. The, the, for the generator, these are the equations, the power equations. These two equations are used in this. You have a rectifier and the DC side again, this is the power equation. Then you have the inverter. So after the inverter, the power transferred again, this equation is used. So what is required is that you get the maximum power and this should be equal to this and equal to this and equal to this. Then maximum power will be transferred up to the grid. So that is what is uh, to be ensured. Uh, so once again, once again, yeah. Uh, from here, you get uh, these quantities, that is the omega, uh, maximum power, all those things. So you, you have uh, a power value here, the maximum power. Then for the generator, you calculate uh, uh, from the speed, actually, that voltage will be coming, what voltage, terminal voltage is there, what should be the corresponding current to transfer that power. Similarly, uh, that voltage, when you rectify it, you, get, you will get uh, the VDC, corresponding to the VDC, what should be? the IDC required. Now, again, you have the amount of power. Well, the losses can be at respective points can be uh, reduced. Yeah? Finally, from the inverter, you have to transfer that power. For that, two things are required. One is MA, that's modulation index. Another is delta, that is the power angle. With that, the power transfer will be uh, complete. So um, the control in, uh, is here in the inverter. This is a point to be uh, noted that for MPPT means that, that the control that has to be in the inverter. If you think that, okay, with a MA, but then this modulation interest, you know that there is a range, permissible range. So uh, it may not be uh, sufficient uh, if the usual practice is, is to keep the DC voltage. So power, we may have to vary that uh, deceiling voltage. So that, that is uh, a suggestion given here, actually. You know, as MPPT rectifier and the grid side converter. Within that, uh, we have to include a chopper that will uh, uh, vary the DC voltage. So that uh, can be con uh, calculated. How, see, from the wind speed, what should be uh, uh, the, the the omega required? Uh, uh, that can be you know, uh, the optimum value of omega angular speed can be calculated. You can compare that with uh, the actual value of operating omega and get the error. Uh, and that uh, with that, actually, we can operate the switch. Means the duty ratio of the chopper can be decided uh, based on uh, this error. Then uh, uh, the maximum power transfer is possible in MPPT, sorry, in uh, PMG. This is possible in a standalone. This is possible in grid. What is showing is in the grid connected. In standalone, when we do, Remember that if the maximum power is uh, extracted, will there be uh, you know, will there be absorption, sufficient demand for that? If only there is a demand for that. That's true whether solar or wind. Uh, MPPT operation uh, shall be for grid connected cases. Otherwise, there should be uh, storage. The excess power, the, whatever power produced, should be stored if demand is not there. Yeah. Uh, let me stop it here uh, and uh, uh, let us. A uh, few more slides are the. In even uh, performance evaluation sort of things that uh, I hope participants can just go through that it will not be very tough. Uh, but otherwise, let me stop it here and uh, uh, 